Hi, this is Ling Ling Fan. I'm a professor at the University of South Florida. I would like to talk about the Julia admittance, a package we are developing. This video is for JuliaCon 2020 live talk. First, why do we need admittance? For power grid, we usually like to do stability analysis, and we can split a system through a bus and looking at the system from left and the right are the two component and each can be impedance or each can be admittance. With that, we have the affiliate domain response. We can conduct stability analysis using Nyquist plot or Bode plot, this kind of criteria. And this method has been widely used in power grid industry. For example, this is the task force called the Wind Energy System Subsynchronous Oscillation Report by IEEE Power and Energy Society. It's called TRAD. So what is admittance? I'd like to just give a quick tutorial. If you look at ILC circuit that Professor Lewin put on the blackboard, um, here he can write ODE equations for this circuit by express voltage and the current relationship. The highlighted one, it is Z, and that is impedance. Express this voltage and current relationship. So this impedance actually has a lot to do with dynamic uh, of the systems. So first, let's just solve this guy in this Julia doing time domain simulation, you use differential equations and using plots. And we can quickly see that this is great to see that you can show this 40 hertz oscillation for uh, excitation. In this case, we perhaps give a step response for the uh, incoming voltage source, then the current is uh, have 40 hertz and also the capacitor voltage has 40 hertz. So how can we show it in the uh, impedance? So we can plot the impedance and impedance in the frequent domain, you can see there's a dip at the 42 Hertz. So this 42 Hertz, in fact, it actually matches this 40 Hertz because it means, yeah, this is a very low. So any kind of voltage turbulence, you expect to have a big current at this frequency. So therefore we have this thing called a subsequence resonance in power grid or um, ILC resonance. So this impedance is what we want, the frequency domain response. And this is a scalar one, and it can be measured. So how we can use the frequency scan or harmonic injection method. So next page, we are going to show a more sophisticated matrix admittance example, and also show how do we do harmonic injection. So this is an example of 2.3 MeVa battery inverter. Um, now we are going to put it in, um, yeah, it is. We want to look at the emissions. So first, this guy is three phase. It will be connected to a controllable voltage source. Everything is high power, high voltage. So we have to have very special equipment to do that. And that this experiment is done at National Renewable Energy Lab. So for three phase of voltage, we usually use DQ to ABC and for current also ABC to DQ. Essentially, you can see the voltage current expressed by a matrix relationship. This is called DQ admittance. It's two by two admittance. At every frequency point, you can see there is a value here, or matrix here. So how did we get this? We first give VD a perturbation, and then we all record ID IQ. Uh, I'll then do FFT analysis for this uh, steady state uh, sort of disturbances. So we got the first column and do the ratio. So we got the first column at this frequency. When next we put the BQ, got the second co column. So in the end, we got something like this right part for different something called the operating condition that different real power reactive power condition. We can grab uh, the entire um, frequency domain responses for this guy. It is the elements. All right, so now what is the most important stuff in this uh, 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 procedure? That is, it's a very data in intensive. And um, the previous people usually use Python and the real have package to do Python. A lot of people do Python. So here uh, I tried Julia and found it is great. So essentially we just have lots of time domain data we have to read in and lots of uh, frequency points. For example, in this case, we have to have two event, like one disturbance, another disturbance. And then we can take care of ID IQ, so two channels, two event, two channels for let's say 39 points. 
So you can imagine you have uh, so much of so many of this data to handle. And in case you have a big uh, network system like a three bus, then it is much more. So this is just a one bus system you have two by two. All right, so then you can imagine you have lots of data. You have to read data, plot data, and use this plus JL delimited file. Uh, we can push data, everything into a data structure, voltage current there. Finally, then we can just use FFTW um, the package, really nice to grab the phases out, phases of voltage current. And the last step, this green part are not data intensive. After you have phases at each frequency, just grab their ratios to got admittance at this frequency. Um, Following up, you can also do data fitting, get an external expression. Uh, with external expression from source and load, you can also do stability analysis. Uh, some people have written this control system.gl. So the blue part is really cool that uh, can be handled by Julia very well. So I'll give you an example here. We do three bus, 39 frequency point, about six event because each bus is DQ. So you can have to have the six event and six channel, 39 data point. And because uh, the software gave us lots and lots of channels, so entirely we have to handle 1.4 gigabytes of data. For example, this is one event at one frequency, we have a folder. Inside the folder, we have well, this much of data. Every data is 2.7, but you can look, uh, they will um, no, have multiple data here because we have lots of channels. Each 2.7 megabytes data, you can see it's like this. Uh, first column, current, uh, first column is, uh, is time, time step, and then a 10 channel of data. And uh, so uh, this package can be really nice used using delimited file. You can read this, this file and read the multiple, read um, multiple files, one by one, read all these files. Uh, finally, we can stack all everything into a data structure. Uh, here we use data taught all frequency, uh, array after array, array over array. So, um, it's necessary to create a bigger data structure to save all time domain data for every frequency measurement, every channel, every event. So with that, then let's go to FFT. So here is just FFT function that uh, it's pretty um, nice that you can find from a lot of demo of Julia. So with that, then we can just keep calling that for each event, each channel, each signal. So then we got these uh, phases at every um, uh, measurement that we want. So that's a very interesting one that we can finally grab the booty plot here. We finished this uh, step that is called uh, grab a phase phases. Right? Um, so that's what we found. It is really nice, uh, great to deal with data intensive applications and uh, several package, this delimited files, FFTW are pretty handy. So thank you.